I now want to talk about implementing and managing domains for our Microsoft 365 and Azure tenant. All right. Um, so when it comes to domain names, you are given a temporary name when you first um, sign up for your subscription for Azure and Microsoft 365. When you set your tenant up, you are given a domain name called a dot on Microsoft.com name. All right, so that is your original name, but of course, you know, if we're going to be managing email and, and services and all that, we want our uh, service name, our tenant name, to be known as a custom domain name of our choosing, usually based on what we use as our web presence and all that. For example, my web presence is examlabpractice.com and maybe I want all of my services associated with that name maybe I want to be able to you know manage email and and all of that through that then um, then I need to set that custom domain up here in the Microsoft 365 services in order to make all that work so how do we go about doing that well the first thing you gotta do is you got to purchase a domain name um, now I use GoDaddy and uh, some people like GoDaddy, some people don't like GoDaddy, and I've just kind of, I've used GoDaddy for probably 14 or 15 years, um, so it's, I've, I've been with them so long, I've just kind of stuck with them. But you can register domain names through anybody, but, uh, or through any of the different registrar companies that are out there. And uh, so how do I go about doing that? Well, I'll just show you an example of GoDaddy here. Here's GoDaddy, all right? Um, I can choose a name that I want to register right now um, if you're just wanting to play around you could register a name and it's very cheap it, uh, especially if you do like a name like a dot live or something those names are currently very cheap you know they have some names that are just like 99 cents like a dot store name for example if you're just wanting to play around then that's a great way to do it right um, but you know if I was gonna Let's say my name is, well, let's say I was going to register that name, examlabpractice.store, right? I could search that, see if the name's available, um, and then, you know, obviously I can just, I could purchase the name, and then at that point, we've got to register that name with, uh, on the Microsoft service side, okay? So, let's go back. And I'll come back to that in a second. If I go right here under settings, this is portal.microsoft.com. If I go under settings and I go down to domains, you can see that I've actually already um, registered to my domain names, but I'm showing you the process anyway here. That was my original name right here. And then what I did is I registered my examlabpractice.com name and that became my default. I set that as my primary. Okay, so that's how that worked. Looks like this is probably just locked up. So let's try uh, let's try refreshing. Let's try this again. See if it goes a little quicker this time. Okay, it didn't like that I was uh, doing it in in private mode apparently. So anyway. Um, Anyway, you, you can, it says make it yours. Now you do have to be careful when you go to purchase these names because what ends up happening is they try to stack on all these different things that you don't need. So just if you decide to, to go through and purchase this, purchase a name, just make sure that you uh, don't agree to all the other services that they want you to agree to. And you know, you can get it, they'll tell you first year for 99 cents. Definitely something you can play around with. Um, you can't use the same name as me, obviously. So, you know, if you are doing hands-on and all that, it's probably a good idea for you to come up with your own, uh, you know, naming convention and all that stuff. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Whatever you want your your uh, name to be here, that would be my advice. So, what happens once I've registered that name? Well, here is you go into your DNS uh, records for that name in GoDaddy, in this case GoDaddy, I'm using, again, I'm using GoDaddy, and um, I would uh, need to add a record. Now let me show you what I mean by I gotta add a record. Let's jump back into, let's go back over here, 
to portal.microsoft.com. All right, and we're gonna go back to settings and then domains. And so what we would do is we would add a domain name, okay? Now if I really bought exam lab practice dot store, okay? I'd say use the domain, okay? And then now it's gonna get me to verify that I actually own that name, all right? So I would add a text record to this domain's DNS record, basically. Um, that's the first option. The second option is if you can't add a text record, you can add an MX record. That's a mail exchange record. And another option is if you've already set up a website, you could it'll give you a little file, and you just store that little file in the root of the website folder, and um, it'll verify it that way. So if I say add a text record to the domain, I would click Continue. And then I'm going to copy this data right here. It's basically like a one-time code. And I would copy that data right there. And I would jump back over here, right here. And I would add, I would add a text record. All right, you can just put the at symbol for that. And then you would paste that in right there. Okay, and then I would hit save. All right, and it would create that record. Now, once that record's created, I would jump back over here and I would click verify. Now, I didn't really buy that name, so obviously if I verify, it's not going to really ver ver verify. But if I did own that name, it would have worked, right? It would have verified. Okay. And so then at that point, at that point, let's, uh, let's go back over here to domains. I would have that domain name and I could make it my primary. And again, just, you know, you, I, I wouldn't have all this other stuff if this was my primary domain. Name. So at that point, I'd make it my primary. And that, and it would also be reflected on the Azure side of things as well. In fact, if we go over to portal.azure.com, Azure lets you register the same, register it too. So you go to the menu button, you go to Azure Active Directory. I could have done it this way too. So go here, and then there is a custom domain names blade. So I could click on that, and look at there. So there's that same name. I could have done it this way too. So it's all tied together anyway, right? It's all tied together. So that's how you can add that custom domain name. Now, I do want to talk, I want to jump over and into my drawing for just a moment, because I do want to point something out if you were hosting a, a DNS publicly as opposed to using somebody like GoDaddy. I was talking about doing it through GoDaddy, but you could technically, if your company was hosting a public DNS, then you would uh, do it that way. So let me jump in and show you that. So if this was your scenario and you had an actual domain like this here, and you weren't using, you, you could register it with GoDaddy, but you would also have to set up an internet facing DNS server. This DNS server right here Though this DNS server is hosting the name for the internal side, it is not a internet-facing DNS server. Nor do you want this server to be an internet-facing DNS server. So that's what GoDaddy is doing. GoDaddy is an internet-facing DNS server. They provide internet-facing DNS services. But if you just wanted to do it yourself, then the way that we traditionally did that in the real world is we would host a DNS server out on the DMZ, the Demilitarized Zone. All right, and it, it would have the same name, examlabpractice.com, or in the case of if I purchased the name store and wasn't using the .com name, then it would be .store, right? But um, let's just try to fit that in the best I can here. Well, I think what I'm going to have to do, because I just don't have a lot of room, is we'll just put that. We'll put that right here, underneath it. Okay, and then maybe I'll uh, I'll put a, a blue border around that real quick, and we'll just paste that blue. This is just to show that even though these names are the same, this is the internet-facing DNS server. This is a private DNS server managing the domain DNS. So at that point, um, 
you would you would do the same thing if this was like a Microsoft DNS server you can create a text record you would have to to when you register the name through GoDaddy or somebody like that you would have to tell GoDaddy to use the IP address of your DNS server but at that point anytime somebody queries this name from the internet it's going to hit this DNS server so you'd have to create the te text record there okay um, you're not going to be doing that in your lab environment or any of that so I wouldn't I wouldn't attempt to try to set that up in your lab environment you, you'd have to have a public address associated with it and all that I'm just saying that this is how some companies do it it's not very common these days a lot of people are using for their for their websites they're using internet facing DNS hosting companies like GoDaddy but it is a a possibility it is a way to, to handle it all right so hopefully that now helps you understand the idea of managing domains in the Microsoft 365 and Azure AD services. Now I want to show you one more quick thing uh, involving our domain name. Um, if we go over to portal.microsoft.com, go to domains, whenever you register a domain name, the next thing you think about with this is the fact that maybe you're wanting to manage uh, exchange online and all of that stuff uh, so that you can check your email and you want to support your custom domain name with teams and some of the various services so when you click on a name that you've uh, you've registered there's a continue setup option and it's going to walk you through basically creating the records that are needed um, to be supported for things like Microsoft Exchange. So they mentioned right here, Exchange, Exchange Online Protection. Uh, you're gonna need this record created. You're gonna need this record created. You're gonna need this record. So basically you just jump over to GoDaddy or wherever that you, um, whatever you registered and you just create those records. So again, all I gotta do is just come right over here and click Add Record and I'm gonna create the records that they're telling me that need to be created here. Once you've done that, once you've done that, you'll be able to, you know, it'll tell you that everything's completed and everything's healthy, and if I click on it, I'll be able to click this DNS records tab and I can see that these records have been created, okay? So, um, and of course, you know, if you still got for backwards compatibility for Skype for business and all that, um, you know, granted, you know they've deprecated all that nowadays but you know for exchange and teams and all that um, you gotta have uh, these additional records if you want things to properly work okay but uh, that little walkthrough that they got is very easy there's also if you do a quick Google search on um, Google or Bing do a quick Google search on DNS records to connect your domain they have this article uh, this is the same thing I just showed you, registering your, your domain name and then creating these records step by step. Okay, so it's actually you know very straightforward. You just got to um, register the domain name and then follow the directions. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video and I hope to see you again. <music>